Let's take out my extensions. Yes, I am wearing extensions. I'm gonna be wearing these glasses today because I didn't feel like putting in contact lenses, but I am going to apologize in advance for the glare. I'm not apologizing, however, for their really cute, stylish manner. I love uh, pretty glasses, so if you want, they are from my collection with Zillo. I'm gonna be linking them down below. They are extremely affordable, they're extremely stylish free advertising basically. I've had these extensions in, these micro keratin bond extensions for the past two months. I'm actually super happy at how well they were blending by the last few weeks. However, I am done with them. Two months is actually a long time for me to stay with any particular hair, anything. So it was fun or it lasted. I have formed fairly strong opinions about them, but that is a whole ordeal for the end of this video. But today I'm gonna be explaining to you how I'm going to be removing them myself with this singular tool. Let's get into it. I'm also filming in my offices today. I have a studio and I have an office and this office is particularly technically for Stellari, but I really love the atmosphere in here. I, I love the sofas that I got. So I'm gonna start this off by saying a couple of things. The type of extension that I have on my hair are called micro keratin bonds, tiny keratin bonds that have been melted and then pressed onto my hair, allowing it to stay on the hair for long periods of time. They can stay in for as far as I know, up to four months, and then they can be just simply moved up the hair or removed completely. In my case, they have stayed in exactly for two months. I am actually super impressed with, and if I don't physically remove them, these things are not budging and I could stay with them for much longer. I am removing them because I am me. I want to experiment with new things. The second thing I want to say is that technically this is meant to be removed by a professional. This is the very first time that I am going to be doing them. I have removed a couple already just so that I get a bit familiar with the process. The reason I am doing them myself is because I like to do things myself. I watched a ton of videos to help me understand the process and how it's done and obviously to do it without damaging the hair underneath. In the off chance, however, that you enjoyed watching this type of content or you want to do this yourself, here is how to remove bonded extensions from Stella. <laughs> Here are the tools that I have with me today. And for the most part, there's literally only one item that you need. These extension pliers or extension removing tools. In fact, when I bought these off of Amazon, that is what I wrote in. They've got a very flat head, except on the inside, it's got these quite sharp grooves. And the whole purpose is that this is meant to crush the keratin bond, allowing that bond with the hair to be broken and the whole thing to just slide off the hair. From the few that I have removed, it is quite a tedious process, but this does get the job done. I then have some metal clips and these mesh sheets. These are really, really good and effective in just separating the hair. This is just going to help keep our hair super tidy. I have a fine tooth comb and this is going to be necessary because we're going to need to comb out the hair and also remove the shedded hair. Because these extensions have been in my hair for two months, I am expecting a ton of shedding. We lose around 100 to 200 hairs every single day. And over a course of two months, we're looking at quite a bit of hair. And then just as a precaution, I also have this extension remover spray. Sometimes some stylists recommend using some form of a lubricant to help remove the product. This is usually either oil-based or alcohol-based. And this is just really good for tape extensions, bond extensions. I actually use this for my wig adhesive remover. It's really good for that. But I have this just in case, although as far as I know, this thing should be enough. Let's start. I'm gonna start with this side over here. As I do this, because this is going to be a particularly tedious process, I'm also going to be answering questions that you guys have left me on my Instagram and going to be answering them today because I realized that most of you do not actually know me in a personal way because I tend to only speak about hair. In my personal life, however, I also speak about hair a lot. <laughs> also, if you don't follow me on Instagram, feel free to. Would you ever shave your head again? You know, I actually really would. I have one regret and that is that I did not stay with my buzz cut long enough. So yes, I do think that somewhere in the future I will be shaving my head again because it was the most incredibly fun experience ever. This is going to be a very tedious process. Ta-da! I'm 
This is how much shedding there is with one extension removal. I'd say there are around 20 hairs with this one. Again, completely normal because this hair has not budged in two months. Oh, I missed my hair. So all I'm really doing is I'm taking the plier, the tool, and I'm just gently, well, fairly fiercely pressing on the bond and crushing it. And I have to do this on all angles because when you crush it one way, you kind of flatten it and then you have to twist it 90 degrees and then flatten out that part, essentially just smashing it from multiple different angles until the whole thing comes loose. Do not pull if it's not budging, just continue crushing and pressing until it does budge. If your career didn't work out, what job do you think you'd be doing now? I get this question asked a lot and it's as if people wouldn't know, but I'd, I'd be a hairstylist. If I wasn't doing social media, I would probably be doing hairstyling, which is what I was doing before. In fact, the only reason that I got into it is because I am shit at explaining various hair techniques. So it was always easier for me to just film it and put it on YouTube. And then it accidentally took off. I'm extremely fortunate, but I stumbled into my career. I, I fully intended to become a hairstylist, which I could technically still become, but instead I did social media. Have you ever had a chemical burn reaction to hair, bleach, or color? I personally have never ever encountered an allergic reaction, a burn, anything of the sort. I do not know how we still haven't done it, considering I test and try and experiment with and I break so many rules in the hair industry that I'm surprised I haven't done anything, but I always try to maintain a fair amount of safety and caution. I do try to research all the products. The one time I actually got a few scalp burns was the very first time that I had my hair bleached. I didn't do it. The salon that I was working at, they did it for me. I don't know what volume of bleach they used, but I do know that they put me on their plastic wrap, bleach on my roots under the climazone. It's a heat. Hood. So I'd say that would be the very only time that I actually had burns on my scalp. Do you prefer styling your own hair, wigs, or someone else's hair? I always say this much. If people didn't speak, I would love to do people's hair every single day. If I had nothing but models who didn't really come with their own thoughts and feelings and emotions, I would, I would love to do it. But the one thing that I was always shit at is small talk as well as trying to comfort people when they've done a weird hair change or anything of the sort. And so I do always say like, I think I still prefer doing my hair, my own hair and teaching and giving you guys the encouragement to do your own stuff instead of doing other people's hair just because I am not a great person to speak to while doing hair. I get so just completely absorbed by whatever it is that I'm doing that I, I tend to suck at conversation, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. Why do you think you lost followers when you shaved your head? I've already addressed this quite a few times in the past, so I won't really drag on about it. I know why people unfollowed and I try not to be bitter about it because I understand the logic behind it. People saw me as the hair girl. So when the hair girl shaved off her hair, there was nothing else left to follow. And I get that and I understand it and I made peace with it. It did sting, however, at the time. I lost around 100,000 followers on my Instagram and my views on YouTube drastically dropped the minute I shaved my head and then I, I continued doing a bunch of different designs. But a part of me is still really just sad about the fact that they missed my own personality through it. Like I, I'm not the hair girl, I'm the experiment hair girl, which means that I like to do weird things Ow. to my hair. Just because I shaved my head didn't mean that I didn't continue to be creative and colorful and bold and whimsical with it. I understand that I should have foreseen it happening because it was not a smart move to do, especially a few months before I launched a hair brand. But it, it, was, it was still quite shocking to see the attachment that people had to someone else's hair. I think it was still interesting to see. After the hairbrushes, do you think about launching some hair accessories? One of the things that I feel I did really, really badly is announcing the launch of my brand and building hype around it. I spent two years of formulating or rather manufacturing these bloody brushes, making sure they're okay. And the whole entire time I was keeping it a secret. So when it came time to launch it and announce it, I had no idea what I was doing or how to do it. And I feel like I never made a big enough hype about something that consumed two years of my life and a ton of 
energy, money, everything. So when it comes to the launch of my next product, I want to be a tiny bit more vocal and actually share the process with you and actually invite you to get excited as much as I am because keeping it a secret did not benefit me. I feel like I should have brought you along and actually heard your thoughts, everything. So I am going to share with you the next plans for Stellari in terms of product launches. So the next product that I have launching that is guaranteed is another brush design, but this is different than the other two. You're going to die. You're actually going to die. It is the most premium product I have ever created. It functions differently from the previous two. So do not expect, you know, just this, just these two. It is so much more elevated and it is my personal favorite brush out of all three of them. It is going to be even more premium. So it's going to have a price tag to match, but that is my brand. I am not claiming to be low end. I'm not claiming to be affordable. The products, the designs, the materials, everything that goes into it, it is premium, it is quality, it is who I am. Every product that I attach my name to, my brand name to, is going to follow in the same footsteps in the sense that they are going to be backed by testing, by design, by quality. I'm not white labeling. I'm not just slapping my name, my logo, my identity onto products that already exist. I'm creating something from scratch and along with time, this takes a ton of money, a ton of research. So the price tag that I put to my products, they are very, very well calculated for everything that went into it. I love my previous brushes, but you guys are going to go insane for the next product that is launching hopefully within the next few months. I obviously will keep you very updated. Then, I don't know if I should share this because it's not confirmed yet, but if this happens, you guys are gonna die. The most insane collaboration with another brand, another hair brand. I'm not going to say more about it because it's not official, it's not confirmed. I'm just gonna say keep a lookout for anything excited because you guys are going to get super, super, super in love with the idea. And then we're actually working on our next brush design and this is a travel brush design. I'm not gonna keep this a secret. I want you to get excited. The most requested thing I had after releasing Divina and my Angelica brush is, oh my God, can you release a travel edition of these brushes? So that is what we are currently working with right now with my product design team. Obviously it is still very much in the design phase. I am however going to share with you a very, very tiny glimpse of the brush. This is actually a design that I made. Literally, it's what I sent to my product design team. I'm not going to share anymore. It is going to be emerald in color because you guys requested that a ton. We are actually designing it in such a way that it's going to have two functions. I can't share any more than that. The one thing I will say is it will be a registered patented design. And then I want to do a line of wigs. Again, I'm in talks with suppliers because I want to bring out a line of really incredible colored wigs, human hair wigs that are the easiest to wear and the easiest to buy. One of the most common things that I get sent is that wigs tend to be quite difficult to buy because so many people are unfamiliar with the terminology used. What density do I get? Do I get the knots bleached? Do I get baby hair? Do I get the free parting? Do I get HD lace or Swiss lace? So I'm working on those as well because I want to get you the best out there and they're obviously going to be items that you can then use with your premium Stellari products. And then I will start my Everest, which is, I, I'm currently in the process of researching manufacturers and suppliers for a product. I am gonna have hair products, rest assured, hair tool related or wig related, but I am working also on custom formulations. And one of the products that I want to do is something that does not exist currently on the market. I'm not gonna share more than that because I swear to God, if someone releases it before I do, I will scream. And I have no idea how to start the formulation, but I'm looking for the manufacturer right now, the supplier who can start the research and development that needs to go in to create this product because this is going to be the coolest hair product. I will say no more because obviously it does not exist yet and also I want to keep it under wraps for the time being. But that is, that is kind of the plan for the next few months. A ton and a ton of exciting products coming your way. For the time being, however, Get your hands on one of these. They are going to be your favorite, favorite, favorite hair tool anytime it comes to your next hair invention. If you want, and for you only, I'm going to give you this discount code that you can use. This is for literally my YouTube gang and YouTube gang only. 
get 15% off, get both of them. <clears throat> I think I've done around eight so far and my hand hurts. It takes a considerable amount of like, of pressing and my hand aches. <laughs> Sometimes I want to clone myself just so I can do the other side quicker. If you want to see some product that you do not find on the market that would make your life easier in terms of hair, comment it below, babies. I am taking suggestions. I want to know what you guys want. Do you think they've made an electric version of this that doesn't require grip strength? Four hours in and I've just finished the left side of my head and my entire back i still have this side to continue but i also have my doll hello baby here's a q a for you this is my baby salami okay bye bye what length is your own hair at the moment um it is this length <laughs> i love it when are you going to remove your extensions right now i like having them i like that i tried them First of all, because I put in long extensions, they did require quite a bit of styling every day because my own hair was short. I also noticed that the texture of the extension and the texture of my own hair never really matched. The extension had quite a bit more weight than my own. So that was one of the things to kind of keep in mind. And then kind of the main thing that bugged me is that I couldn't brush my hair. And I never liked the fact that I couldn't run my hands through it. My glasses kept getting stuck. They were complimented a lot because I had long hair at a time where I was known for not having long hair and they were a very, very fun change. Is there any way seeing you in the near future married to your lover? My lover is Dan. I like the idea of marriage. I don't like the idea of weddings. I don't think I see marriage in my future anytime soon. I would like to kind of establish myself further in my own career and make it as a woman in social media, business and everything and I'd obviously like a life partner to come with me but I don't necessarily require marriage to cement the idea of us staying together forever. I tend to think that love is enough and I don't need a ring, paper or a big fancy event to tell me who I want to spend my life with. Where are you from? I am half Hungarian but I am from technically Malta if you're unfamiliar. Tiny island that should get more recognition and should frankly step up its game in literally everything. I do, I do love it. Favorite Taylor Swift song? Thank you for asking this. These are the real questions to ask. Yes, I am a massive Taylor Swift fan. I don't consider myself a Swifty though because I exclusively listen to Taylor Swift for folklore and evermore. My favorite song of Taylor Swift is Cardigan. I've heard that you should not use conditioner on your scalp just the end. That is correct, mainly because you'd be wasting product and also you'd be making your hair more oily. The hair that comes straight out of your scalp is typically still in very good condition. The whole point of conditioner is that it conditions the hair in a very similar way that like varnish seals wood. We require it on the ends of our hair because as our hair grows and we brush it and we dye it and everything, the condition of the hair simply starts deteriorating. If we apply conditioner onto our scalp, we may find that it gets oily way quicker than otherwise. How are you? I like that question. I am at a very good space in my life. I am creatively challenged again. I feel motivated. I am very in love with the whole aspect of designing products, of bringing products to you. I'd love to slowly, slowly transition into business owner and not just content creator so that's kind of the aspect of my life that i'm in but i'm good i'm happy i'm healthy i'm enjoying the sunshine and I, i'm not gonna lie i'm a tiny bit raging right at this moment extension is particularly tough who does all the editorial work i'm assuming who does my editing uh my lovely editor ben does a lot of my editing he takes all of this footage and very nicely puts it in a way that is way more entertaining than it is in its raw form. So we kind of collaborate on the projects together and yeah, he creates it for me. How is your hair still healthy after all these colors? The most asked question ever. Um, and a lot of people seem to be baffled by the fact that I still have hair. So let me break it down a tiny bit. The hair follicles to life, but the hair that I have in my hands right now is dead. And from the very moment it grows out of our scalp, it cannot ever be healthy because there's nothing to make healthy. 
there is only an idea of prevention of damage. So when we buy expensive conditioning treatments, when we wet our hair with tap water before going into seawater or salt water or chlorine water, when we skip out on chemical treatments, when we avoid using heat, these things, they aren't making the hair healthy. They are keeping it from deteriorating quicker, but it is still going to deteriorate. My point is, the idea that we have about damage is a bit incorrect because we continuously think that it is the chemical stuff that does the damage. And it's, it's a lot more complex than that. But how do I personally still have hair is I do things in moderation. Chemical damage is the most permanent destructive damage that you could do. This is damage that occurs inside the hair. So not in the outer cuticle layer, this happens inside the cortex of the hair. This is where all the bonds of the hair lie. So when we over bleach our hair, this damage can occur. But if we bleach our hair in moderation, the hair could tolerate some of this alteration. So the reason I still have hair on my head, even though I dye it every single month, is for the simple reason that I don't use chemical products on my hair that go into the hair directly. I simply stain the outside. What are the signs of bleach hair that you cannot bleach them more lighter or it will overprocess? Uh, that would be a stretch test or a... I'm sorry, I've been doing this for six hours. Uh, you wet the hair and then on different lengths of the hair, you wrap two ends around each other and you pull. Porosity test. No. You got a name and I can't remember it. My point is, if it rips, you cannot bleach anymore, even if one strand rips and nothing else. Stretch test, it's called a stretch test. Elasticity test. Okay, this process, I started when I was three, clearly you can see that the lighting in here changed. Um, it is now nine at night. It took me six hours to take out all my extensions, which is also the equivalent of time that it took to put in the extensions. But we are here. Here's my bag of extensions that I should sell on eBay. <sighs> That's it. You know a bit more about me and you also know how to remove extensions. My arm is literally so painful. This whole thing is just aching. Here's a comparison of my two hands together. This one's shaking, just so you know. <laughs> but here is the very end look. If you want to get extensions, get them. They are really, really fun and they can be super, super creative. They are time consuming both to put on and to put off. So I would recommend going to your favorite stylist and getting them done. If you do want to remove them at home, this is literally all you need. Be aware you are going to shed a ton of hair. I still really hope you like this video. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, join the Stellar Fam, let's learn a thing or two together and let's start a discussion about all things hair and everything that revolves around it. My name is Stella. I hope you got to know me a bit more in this video and a bit more about extensions as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give it a go and I will see you in my next video. Bye!